I got down here last year and, uh, you know, and, and, and I had a few meetings with Ben, you know, on what his decision was going to be, whether he was going to put his name in the draft or, and, and, and things of that nature. And, you know, and I got the sense when I talked to him, he didn't want to do that. You know, he, he was hungry to, to come back and, and, you know, and improve his position in the, in the draft. And he and I just sat down and kind of mapped out a plan and, um, on, on how he could do that. And, uh, and, and I'll give him credit. He's, he's a super diligent guy. Um, you know, this is a guy that he doesn't come with many extras, you know, I mean, he, he's kind of keeps to himself and uh, doesn't have a big group of people he runs with. And, uh, you know, he really has immersed himself in the, in the process of becoming a great basketball player. And um, he's, he's a guy that, you know, we never had to set up extra workout times for or anything like that. He, he's a self-starter and extremely motivated. And, um, and, you know, and, and I think his best days are ahead of him. You know, I really, I really still look at Ben as a young basketball player. Um, you know, obviously he had a tremendous season and, and made a, made a huge jump and, and was, you know, vital to our success. Um, but, you know, I, I just think, you know, you know, when I first saw Ben, you know, it probably would have been what about four years ago now at the NBA Academy of Mexico city, I was down there recruiting one of his teammates who was on our team now, Umar Balo. And at the time, you know, I would have described him as a, you know, you know, athletic, but physically undeveloped, undersized, unskilled foreman. And, um, you know, and, and somehow between, you know, you know, then and when I got here, you know, he, he kind of had picked up a knack for shooting and you could see that he had a really good wrist and an ability to make, you know, make, uh, make jump shots. And then this year we really challenged him to grow in other areas of the game, you know, his, his ball handling, decision-making and IQ. And, and so I, I think he's just starting that, you know, that part of his development, which is exciting. You know, I mean, this is a guy that has tons of room to grow and, uh, you know, I, I, I think that he'll he'll be able to reach that ceiling just based on his character. And Andrew, I'll speak on him real quick. Um, you know, Andrew's a, I mean, he's a kid I recruited in high school and he uh, and, you know, he 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 turned us down. And um, and then, you know, when he decided to transfer, we were lucky enough to get him the second time around at Gonzaga. And this is a, a, a special guy. I mean, I don't think people I think people forget, you know, because of COVID and everything that happened with transfers and eligibility. You know, Andrew transferred to Gonzaga with the intent of redshirting. I mean, that was 100% the deal. And then all these COVID waivers started happening. And, you know, here we were with um, a really good player who could be instantly eligible. But just to let you know about his, his Andrew, how good of a teammate he is, you know, he was a little apprehensive at first because it kind of broke from the plan. And, and he wanted to make sure if he was going to play that all his teammates were okay with that. And, um, you know, that he wasn't stepping on anybody's toes. So, um, I mean, this guy is a mature game. Um, you know, he, he's a guy that I think that people are going to be really impressed with. Um, you know, he, he has an ability to, to, to play with really good players and make, make the game easier for them. Um, and, you know, and, and, and he's just kind of has that strength to, to kind of allow everybody to be put in positions to do what they do best. So, you know, I, I have, I'm, I'm glad he's getting the recognition he deserves. And, uh, you know, I, I knew, you know, from the day I saw him in high school, that this guy was a legitimate NBA player, and now he gets the opportunity to go out and do it. Go well, James Boyd next. Hi, right, Tommy. James Boyd, Indy Star. Um, they told us last night that Chad Buchanan, that is the Pacers GM, he said that Benedict worked out twice for them. The first one was like the formal workout. The second one, he came back just voluntarily to do a workout with Rick Carlisle. Um, he said that was the first time he ever had that happen, where a prospect worked out twice in one day, especially a prospect that high. So what does that say about his character? And, and maybe do you have any stories about having to kick him out of the gym, maybe just to get some rest? Well, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt. You know, I mentioned that in my opening statement. I mean, it's a guy that that loves to work and he and, he, and he's driven. And, you know, I, I don't think Ben's a guy, you know, at least from my experience, that was, you know, that was, you know, trying to load manage or do any of that stuff. He ain't try, He's not trying to protect anything. I mean, Ben's going for stuff, which I think is super important. I mean, he's in attack mode and, and uh, you know, I think you guys got a hungry guy. Um, you know, he's a guy that I'm pretty confident, you know, once he gets there, he's not going to feel like he's arrived. I think he's going to feel like he has to continue to prove to, you know, to himself and to others that he belongs at that level. And, and I think that's the kind of hunger and desire you need. And, and, and I think Ben has that in spades. Go to Scott Agnes next. 
Hey, Tommy, I know Domus is a big fan of yours. Um, thanks for doing be. this. You better Absol be. Absolutely. <laughs> Nate, thanks for doing this. Um, in terms of getting ready for this draft, the conversations you had with Ben and then about what he needs to do next and to improve his game even more, what were those conversations about and what do you foresee being his next uh, part of his game? Well, you know, I mean, I I'll just put it like this, like how I approach it with guys like Ben. Um, you know, I always tell him, like, li listen, I, I can't tell you everything you need to do to be a ready-made NBA player. But what I can tell you to do is, is how to be great at Arizona. And if you're great at Arizona, I mean, then you're going to get an opportunity to, to, to go into the NBA, hopefully as, you know, a high draft pick. And, um, and, and so, you know, I, I think that's going to be up for Ben and his coach to decide. You know, I think he's going to be an interesting guy. I mean, I think this is a guy that, you know, he, he'd really had – emphasized and wanted to develop his ability to drive the basketball and handle the basketball this year and make decisions. So, you know, we really focused on that area. I mean, I, I know there were times where I was, you know, on Ben to hunt more catch and shoot shots. You know, I, I think, um, you know, Ben's going to be, it's going to be really interesting to see his development. You know, to, does he become a, you know, more comfortable handling the ball and, you know, being a you know multiple dribble, multiple direction guy, or is this guy, you know, you know, going to, going to kind of, slide into more of a catch and shoot drive closeout type guy. And, and I think both of them are great. I think to me, that's what excites me about him. This isn't a guy that necessarily is going to need to dominate the ball to be a great NBA player. Um, you know, but, but I, but I, but I saw enough growth in that area this year that if he continues to work on that stuff, you know, he could, he could become that type of player. Um, you know, I, I think he, you know, certainly at the offensive end has some ready-made things that will allow him, you know, if, if he, if he locks into what coach wants and, you know, learns the system, I think he'll be able to contribute, you know, earlier rather than later. All right, uh, Indianapolis media, any other questions for coach? You're happy to stay, you're welcome to stay on. Just want to kind of give you a chance here if you need to get out. I got one more, if, if I may. Yep, um, go ahead. In regards to, to Ben, what, what is it like, seeing him compete against Dalen because Dalen came in for a workout with the Pacers as well. And Dalen's like super outspoken, super, he told us he has irrational confidence. I think they kind of fit that same mold. So what was it like to see them go head to head in practice? And did you ever have to like pull them apart? Cause it seems like they were just two, two pit bulls. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I would say early, I had to pull them apart a little bit and I had to kind of pull them aside and just told them that all that, that macho stuff is fake lock in on getting better and, and you guys need to, you know, compete with each other, not compete against each other. And it, it's about getting reps and, and, and growing and learning. Um, but, but I, you know, you know, Day Dalen definitely has some juice and brings it every day and, you know, and, and, and listen, and, and, and Ben's not afraid of that. Like he definitely has that. He just, you know, I, I don't think Ben's going to, you know, quite has as much, uh, you know, pizzazz or, or, or however you want to say it as Dalen, you know, comes across with, but, um, but no, I mean, Ben, Ben, ben listen, I, I just know this, we had, we had some tough moments early in the season and even throughout the season, you know, you get in tough games, it happens. And, and Ben was great in those huddles. And not only, you know, sometimes guys say things in those huddles and they go out and they're, they're not able to back it up. I mean, Ben, ben you know, was, was on the guys in the huddles, you know, was great, you know, was, was, <laughs> focused about, you know, the task at hand. And then he went out and he made, he made huge clutch plays. So, um, you know, I think Ben definitely, you know, has that clutch gene and, um, you know, with continued, you know, development, I mean, maybe, maybe that can become one of his calling cards. Go back to Scott Agnes. Yeah, Tommy, I had a quick question at the draft combine. I was asking them about the interview process and Rick was having them design a last play and Ben was saying, yeah, I drew it up for me, you know, speaking to his confidence and, and all of that. Has that always been there the last couple of years or is, or is that part of his game and wanting it and, and willing to put himself on the line or is that something he's added? Well, you know, I mean, I, I only had Ben for a year and, um, you know, I, I definitely know, you know, we called his number at, at tough moments and, you know, he, even, you know, yeah, I mean, not, not even into the game scenarios, maybe, maybe, you know, I remember in the UCLA game and the, you know, conference championship, you know, we called um, a couple actions for him to run off a baseline screen. And I mean, you know, I, I want to think it was great play design, but the way he rose up and stuck the jump shot, I think I'm going to, I'm going to err on the side. It was, it was all him making a great play. So, uh, you know, but that says something. I mean, those are things, you know, you, you come out of a timeout and, 
And you know that 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 player knows, you know that you know that that there's a good chance they're going to get a look, and uh, to have the wherewithal to knock it down in those moments is, uh, you know, it, it, it's a huge deal for a young player. And um, you know that doesn't surprise me that he called his own number. All right, we'll shift to uh, Dale and Terry in Chicago. Casey Johnson, go ahead. Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Tommy, for doing this. I'm Casey Johnson with NBC Sports Chicago. Still trying to recover from the bundle of enthusiasm we experienced on Zoom last night with Dale and Terry. <laughs> uh, what stands out to you about your association with him? I mean, incredible spirit. You know, um, you know, I, I love Dalen and, and I love coaching him, you know, and, and obviously this is one of those cool things. If, if you would ask me, you know, you know, a year ago at this time, you know, if, if, if we would be having this Zoom, Dalen would be in the 18th pick. I probably, I probably would have said, well, don't, probably don't bet on it, you know, but, um, but, but this kid came so far in a year and, um, and, you know, and, and it's, it's a credit to his work, you know, I mean, I know you guys see the enthusiasm and, and all that stuff and, and it, it kind of grabs your attention. I mean, I mean, to me, I mean, I, the way I experienced it was very authentic. And uh, I mean, he practiced his butt off every day um, he, he comes to work with a smile on his face. Um, you can, you can bring him in your office and you can have tough, honest conversations and he participates in those. Um, you know, so, um, you know, I, I, I love his energy and I love his spirit. I think that's an important part, but, but, but what I love more is just at the core of his, of his person is, is a high character dude. And, um, and, uh, you know, I mean, my, my only sad thing is that I don't get to coach him again. And, uh, you know, but but I'll always be here for him and uh, I'm expecting great things. The only follow up I would have, Tommy, is, you know, there's so much attention on, you know, his offensive game and where it needs to grow. And he obviously was a low usage player for you guys. But he also seems like kind of one of those connecting pieces that makes yeah. the players around him better. Would you agree with that? And I mean, 100 percent. You know, I mean, I, I think, you know, sometimes usage is overvalued. You know, I, I don't think people, you know outside of the coaching deal and maybe, you know, some analytic people really understand, you know, you know, what, what, what usage means. And uh, Dalen helps teams win basketball games. And, and obviously his best days are ahead of him. And, um, and, you know, he, he, he did it this year without having to dominate the ball, um, you know, doing it in, in a variety of ways. You know, I think he really, really grew as a player and understanding just how to play with fundamentals, to, to manipulate defense, to understand different spacing and coverage scenarios, um, you know, to, to start reading the game and being able to steal free baskets, you know, whether that's, you know, uh, mixing in a back cut here, outrunning somebody in transition, sticking his nose in there and getting an offensive rebound. I mean, you know, that, that type of stuff is the coach's dream, you know, because at the end of the game, you know, I think all his coaches, you know, think we're pretty good, but a lot of the, a lot of times the game just comes down to effort. And, and make an effort plays and uh and, and Dalen excels in that and um and you know and, and he and I've talked numerous times I mean I've told him you know hey you know we'll, we'll, we'll put you in this position double down on it you know double down on that you know don't don't, don't go out and try to prove to everybody that you you turned into a great three-point shooter the last two months or you know now you're now you're all of a sudden a point guard just go out and hoop and 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 play with great passion and spirit and make winning plays and um and, and, and there's value in that, and your coaches will appreciate it. Thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Spears, go ahead. Coach, good to see you. Um, I'm wondering from the, the time Dalen declared for the draft until, obviously, the, the moments leading up to the draft, what was just kind of your approach with recruiting, and what were the kind of the conversations you had with Dalen? Well, you know, we, we talked a few times, of course, you know, and, and – um, you know, all I wanted as a coach is, is for him to be in the position he ended up in, you know, um, you know, you, you don't want to see a guy go for it and, you know, end up either going undrafted or, you know, or sliding, you know, deeper into the second round um, when they have the opportunity to come back. And then the only reason I say that is because, you know, I know in my heart that the, 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 the potential Dalen has and how much better he could get. So, you know, I, I don't, I didn't, feel selfish in telling him that if he came back, you know, he could do great things and maybe improve his position. But, you know, obviously the way it turns out, I mean, I mean, he did a great job of that in the draft process. His agents did a great job of, you know, framing it and, and putting him in this position. And, um, and so I'm extremely happy for him. And I remember you said during the tournament that 
I think at the start of the season, excuse me, my laptop's going off, but at the start of the season, um, you put Dalen in like footwork boot camp. Yeah. From that point to obviously being a first round pick, you know, talk about his progress. Well, I mean, listen, I think all these players need footwork boot camp and it's not just picking on, picking on Dalen. I mean, I've been, you know, I've been probably driving our players crazy the last weeks I've been down in there and we've been working on footwork and jump stops and pivots and passing techniques. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, those are the foundation to these guys' success. And I think what you're seeing with Dalen and with Ben is, you know, adding those things to their game, I mean, literally allowed them to hit turbo on their development. So, I mean, it's stuff that I'm passionate about and I believe in, and um, I'm, I'm always going to do it, even if it, you know, if it's not sexy or the players aren't excited about it, because at the end of the day, I mean, I think if you commit to that kind of stuff, you know, and, and you have a foundation of talent, you know, like Dalen and Ben did, I mean, these are the results. Bruce Pasco, go ahead. Yeah, Bruce. Hey, next, next. Bruce, we can't hear you. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, my, Bruce, you, know, your it's moment, been so, you had your moment and you choked. It's been so long. We've been on Zoom, fortunately, <laughs> that I forgot where the unmute button is or whatever. Um, anyway, when you left Lolo's last night, um, Christy didn't last much longer. I was wondering, did you watch him or did, did you did you patch in? And how did that go? Did you get to talk to him after that happened? Or? Yeah, I mean, I, I never got to talk to him, but, you know, D Dalen's, you know, people were having fun and um and i was so excited for them but you know i i mean i love christian and and i and i kind of wanted to go have a moment by myself where i could go just you know watch his name get called and you know i i kind of had a good feeling that at 33 there was a good chance for him to get to get you know drafted so i jumped in my car and drove up to the road to another restaurant in Scottsdale and walked in and just sat at a table by myself and no one noticed me and it was perfect and I sat there and I watched his uh I watched his name get called and I was super proud do you have any sense uh how he might fit with the Raptors I don't know if they talked to you at all about him or or uh you know what do you think about that, that yeah I mean I have some great relationships up there with those guys and um and you know they're they're a team that's always put a premium on activity and length and and you know defensive prowess and um and you know i think you know christian really fits their mold you know i i mean for me i mean i i think christian's a really impactful player and um you know i think if you get past the you know well hey is this guy going to be a superstar or an all-star if you can get, get past all that and understand you know maybe not but this guy really impacts the game and really impacts winning and you know his versatility on defense and you know when, when you have somebody that could switch a ball screen to, to protect the rim like he does, to, to run the floor and catch a lob above the rim, you know, at the square. I mean, to me, man, those, those are great traits. So, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sure if Christian stays locked in and works hard that he's going to bring a lot of value, you know, at that 33rd pick to Toronto. And hopefully in a few years, you know, people are shaking their head wondering how he slipped so far. And just uh, curious too, did you hook up? Did you get get a chance to hook up with Ben out there? I know Murph was out there in New York, but I didn't. Yeah, know. no, no, Mur Murph was out there in New York, and I think they had a great time. And you know, Ken Nakagawa on our staff was out there as well. And uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I've been texting with Ben all week and talked with him a few days ago. And you know, this is their time, you know, um, and and they they don't need me lurking or or um, you know harassing them. I I just text them all, happy for them, love them. Congrats, and uh, I'll, I'll catch up with them when things slow down a little bit for them. Cool. Thanks. Troy Hutchison, go ahead. Coach, when we were in Section 7, you mentioned the poll that the NBA has in terms of high school kids and everything. So when you have three players drafted in your first year as head coach, what does that do for the program moving forward, just seeing three guys go in the NBA draft in year one? Well, I mean – you know, I don't want to overthink that, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, I, I was brought to Arizona to do one thing and, and that's, you know, help this program, you know, become, you know, one of the best programs in the country and, and, and win basketball games and hopefully win some championships along the way. So, so that's where my focus is. And, you know, but I also understand, you know, that, that, you know, recruiting plays a big part of this and, you know, as does player development. So I, I think it's just proof that, you know, 
you know, when we get on the court and we get to work, you know, good things happen. And, um, you know, I think we're developing players the right way. And um, I mean, I, I, I know we're loving them. I know we're having a ton of fun and, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll, you know, team success will continue and even grow more. And, you know, and, and hopefully we'll continue to have multiple guys get their names called uh, when the NBA draft comes around. To James Boyd with Indy Star. Yeah, just one more quick one. Um, Benedict is pretty open about his background, the things he's been through, things he's overcome. His brother, he talked to him about his love of his mom and his sister last night. Um, how much do you think the adversity he had to face and betting on himself everywhere he went um, defines the confidence and, and sort of the bravado that he brings to the court and to his life as well? Well, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if I would use confidence and bravado. I, I think I would put it more in the category is conviction and uh, fuel to the fire. You know, I mean, I, I think as you guys get to know Ben, you know, he, he's, he's, he's a great guy. He's not gregarious. He's not over the top. He's not trying to draw attention to himself. Um, but I think internally there's a fire that really burns in there, you know, and, 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 and Chad Buchanan and I were talking about that last night. And I think that's one of the things that really attracted them to Ben is that they, they feel like there's an inferno burning inside that kid. And, and, uh, and I would agree with that, you know, and, uh, and hopefully he's able to continue to tap into that and, and, and harness that. And, um, you know, I, I think if he is, I mean, I, I think we're going to be looking at a really, really good NBA player. All right, I don't see any other hands up. Anybody else have any more questions for Coach? Uh, Justin Spears, go ahead. Yeah, Coach, I'm wondering, are you uh, familiar with any of the, the head coaches or, like, what kind of relationships do you have with the guys that um, your guys are going to, whether it's Rick Carlisle or, or Bill Donovan or some, something like that? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I mean I, I, I've, you know, met Billy Donovan a few times. I mean, he's really close with Coach Few. And um, I, I know, obviously, he's a great coach. And, 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 and tremendously respected. And I, and I think he does right by his players. And, you know, Coach Carlisle and I have talked a few times and texted a few times during this process. And, uh, you know, I, I know this guy's a, a guru and uh, it's a guy that loves, loves getting in the weeds, lo loves developing teams and, and players. So, you know, I, I think he and Ben will, will, will really hit it off, you know, really hit it off well. And then, you know, I, I know some of the guys in the front office in Toronto, um, you know, and, and just have always been impressed, you know, with, with how, you know, you know, they, they, they've built that program up there and, uh, you know, it's been a very non-traditional approach and even, even, you know, the, the way tactically they play, um, you know, I think they're not afraid to try things and, um, and, 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 you know, and I think I fall in line with that as a coach as well. And, um, and so, you know, I, I've always appreciated watching them and, and to be honest with you, I've even, you know, taking a few schemes from them over the years. So, um, you know, I, I think Christian will, I think they'll really appreciate the value he brings, you know, with his versatility that's going to allow him to, to try different things. And from guys that you've sent to the NBA from Gonzaga, what have you heard just about the NBA grind, playing an 82 game season and, and what it takes? Well, I mean, listen, I mean, I, I think our guys get sick of me saying it, but I just always remind them in every conversation that this is going to be hard. This is might be the hardest thing you've ever done. So, you know, I mean, part of the cheat code uh, to being successful is staying positive. Um, you got to stay positive during this process because th there's hard days coming. There's there's challenges and roadblocks you didn't anticipate. And, and you got to be able to work yourself through them. And the other thing I always tell them is, you know, you, you got to be willing to put everything you have into it. And, 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 and we all know how bad you want it. But then understand you can do everything pretty close to right and still not make it. And it, and it still might not work out for you. So I, I think you got to kind of, you know, get over the fear of failure and, and, and you got to go for it. And, um, you know, that, that's the message I always tell our guys. And, uh, and, and you know, and, and, and so we'll continue to deliver that message from our end. And then lastly, for me, um, are you able to talk about the new guys added to your team? I mean, if you would have been a section seven, I mean, I had 30 minutes on that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I can if they, you know, we don't need to, if the other guys don't want to jump on or they want to jump off, you know, I don't want them to feel like they got to hear all this, the, 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 the guys from out of area. But yeah, I mean, for sure, I'll answer a couple questions on that. I think the only other hand we have up is Bruce. Bruce, did you have anything pertinent to the draft that you were going to add before we go to the roster question? 
Well, I actually had, yeah, I didn't have a, I had another question, not like Justin's, but I was just wondering if, if uh, Tommy's done with this roster or if it's still possible he might add another guy. That's basically what I was wondering. All right. Let me, let me just ask any other draft questions. I don't see any other hands up. So um, quick chance here for everyone that may want draft questions. Don't see any. So we'll, uh, we'll go with Bruce's question here and then um, go back to the talking about the new guys. So Bruce, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, Tommy, obviously you got two spots left. I know you've been keeping, keeping at least one open. I didn't know if you plan to keep, keep it the way it is now, or is it still possible you might add another guy if it fits right or whatever over the summer or kind of what yeah, you think? Now? I mean, you know, I, I think everything's an option. You know, I, I feel like we've settled into a point now where, you know, we probably have, you know, a, a workable rotation. Um, you know, at least we have enough guys to kind of fill out that. And, um, you know, but, but again, I'm, I'm never going to limit us if, you know, something comes along, um, you know, it's just obviously getting a little bit later in, in the summer, but you never know. I mean, if, if, if something pops or something becomes available and there's an opportunity, I think we'll be ready to pounce. Okay. And just uh, Matt Lane saying he's coming here for a grad year. How did that work out? And obviously you had a relationship with him. I know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, obviously I have, and Matt's a good kid and, you know, I just told Matt, you know, you need to look at all your options. He's a, he's a great student and, and to be honest with you, I think, you know, he, you know, I think he was looking at NYU, Notre Dame and in Arizona, and he's an accounting guy and even going back to Gonzaga. And, and I think at the end of the day, I, I think, you know, he just, he wanted to just, you know, in his, in his COVID year, he wanted a little bit of a change of scenery. And, you know, I, I told him he could come here and, you know, but there's no promises, no guarantees of anything, um, you know, but, it, but it's a great place to be. And if he wanted to be a part of it for a year, I mean, I, I mean, he's the guy that I trust and I know he'll add to the culture. Thanks. All right. Um, do you want to go back to Justin's here and just briefly yeah. comment on the four, four editions? So you should, you should Justin, we're going one by one with the new guys here. Is that what you want? Yeah. It doesn't have to be a long winning answer. Just, just some about just what, what the new guys bring to your roster. Um, well, you know, we'll, we'll start with the transfers, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Courtney and Cedric, the first thing is they bring experience. Um, you know, I, I think they both, you know, really add to, you know, you know, add value and depth and every other word you want to our perimeter. Um, you know, Cedric is uh, somebody, you know, who I was really just impressed with his feel for the game. Um, you know, how he's able to, you know, he's able to play comfortably with the ball in his hands and read the game. But what I really liked is he's able to, to, to make plays without the ball, just with his cutting and understanding how to move. And, you know, he's been well coached at Campbell. And, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I'm sure one of the adjustments will hit for him will be just playing at a faster pace, but, you know, but, but I think he's excited to do that. And, and I think, you know, with his foundation of having played in that Princeton system and being coached the way he was, I think he's got a, a good understanding of spacing, timing and IQ. And, um, and, you know, yeah, I'm excited for him to see what, so we see what he can do once he gets here. Um, Courtney, you know, is, is a guy that I think we're going to count on in a lot of things, you know, I mean, you know, a significant portion of the ball handling and decision-making. I, I think, you know, he's a guy that's going to really, Added significant value defensively for us, and um, and you know we're we're looking you know to kind of you know hitch our way into his experience and his grit, and um, you know and, and I think there's going to be a lot of added value there. You know, I mean, I, I think you know and and in, in, in the in the in the stuff that I did when I was kind of really looking into him, you know, I, I loved his feel for the game. I, I think there's some some easy growth areas we can attack and really help him kind of make that next jump. But I mean, this is a guy I think we're going to count on to score, to distribute, uh, you know, really impact winning, you know, significantly every game. And then the two freshman bigs, you know, Dylan's here right now. And uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's been fun. I mean, this week I really saw Dylan, you know, kind of settle in and, 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 and make some plays and, and, and some growth um, that that is exciting. You know, I think Dylan's, you know, best days are ahead of him and, you know, it's a steep learning curve for a freshman. Um, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, we're kind of, you know, thrusting him into that and, you know, I've been on him pretty good and, uh, you know, to really challenge him, to just let him know that we have high standards and he has high standards for himself, but, um, you know, I, I just want him to know that we have high standards and we expect him that he'll be great. And, uh, and, and we're going to work towards that. So, um, like I said, just excited, you know, I, th I think he's going to be a guy you guys are going to be able to see, you know, you know, you know, in time and maybe this year, or hopefully some is just, you know, he's going to be able to be a guy that, that physically is able to dominate a defender to go down inside the paint and score a basket. 
and um, which which I really value. And um, and then, you know, offensively, you know, he, he you know, he he has a good wrist, you know, I mean, he, you know, he, his shooting is going to be something that I think eventually will be a strength of his. Um, I'm just trying not to, you know, to, to make that the main focus too early with him, you know, because I really want to kind of, you know, help him with his around the basket and understanding and, and pick and roll understanding and playing a situation like that. And then Henry, you know, Henry's a talented kid too. You know, he's a, you know, European kid who's, you know, played in a, you know, a very prestigious youth program. Um, you know, he's getting some experience playing with older guys this summer. Um, you know, he, he's a very versatile big guy. And then, you know, I, I think he adds value, you know, with rim protection and, you know, moving his feet on defense and then, you know, offensively, um, you know, I think he has a little bit of an understanding how to play in some of this movement and pick and roll stuff. You know, I just don't want to put too much too early on him, um, you know, for, for uh, you know, how he, you know, what we're expecting out of him. I mean, I kind of want to get over here and get our hands on him, you know, and then, you know, the last one in Philip, Philip, you know, from Serbia, I know he, you know, somebody that, uh, you know, signed, it feels like forever ago, but this guy's really talented. I mean, he's a kind of, he's got a very, very polished offensive game. And again, I'd probably put him in the same category as Henry. I mean, I think he's probably close to ready, but again, I don't want to, you know, put, put too much, too much of a burden on their shoulders. till they get over here and we kind of, you know, get to work with them for a, an extended period to see where they're at and just kind of help them with their adjustment. And then uh, what do you think is next for a guy like Justin Kyer? Um, You know, I mean, I'm sure Justin, you know, I mean, I, I was texting with him last night and today and his agent, you know, I'm sure they're looking for, you know, whenever an NBA team, they could jump on a mini camp with, or get on a summer league roster. And, you know, th those things are in his, easy to do as they once were, you know, I mean, so, so, you know, hopefully he'll be able to hook up there. And, you know, then I think, you know, I know, I know there, I already know, because that is a lot of it's been expressed to me. I mean, there's significant interest for him in the G league, you know, and, and I, and I think Justin is a guy that can really, really make an impact in Europe. Um, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's got, he's, he's got great energy. He's a fun person to be around and uh, he's open-minded and, and to me, that's a huge key to being successful in Europe is just being able to go over there and, and basically not live in the U.S. And and so, I mean, this is a guy that I think if he does eventually choose that route, you know, could be if he hangs with it and we could be looking up in a few years wondering, wow, I mean, this guy's playing at a really, really high level and doing really well in Europe. And, and I definitely see that potential in him. Thanks, Tommy. All right, we'll wrap it up with Ryan Wall from the Daily Wildcat. Hey, Tommy, um, the, the three freshmen you just named, uh, do you have any sense? Uh, I know it's early and you haven't spent much time with them, but is there any sense like which out of them, if there's one that maybe will and see like a big uh, workload, you know, early on? I mean, no, no, no sense yet. Like I said, you know, with, with, with most freshmen, you know, I want to be, you know, a, a little bit cautious in my approach because, you know, I, I, I think you just got to get them here and you got to get them comfortable and then, then you can, kind of make the decision that's best for them. And I would say this, I mean, I definitely think we need contribution from them this year for, for us to maximize our, you know, you know, kind of, kind of what we're doing as a team, but, um, but I'm, but I'm going to kind of hold off on any prognostications till they get over here because, you know, the, the, the worst thing you can do as a coach in my position is, you know, overhype them, put a ton of stuff on their shoulders. They come here, they struggle, they lose confidence. And now you got to dig them out of that hole. So, you know, I'm trying to do the best I can to protect them from that. Thank you. All right, that's it. Thank you, Coach, for your time. We appreciate it. Yep. Have a great day, guys.